Okay. Good every day, everyone. This is MOLs and technology class. I am Lady Halan Chagan. I am the Kingdom's Minister of the List, and I am your co-host today. Um, we're going to be discussing the technology portion of the program uh, of doing the MOL table. Uh, there is a lot of classes, uh, a lot of parts of this class that will require me to share my screen. So if at any point you don't see the screen moving or something like that, please let them know so that I can update the share, basically. Right now, you should all see the header for the MOLs and Technology PowerPoint. This PowerPoint, I will be able to email to all of you at the end of the class so that you can take notes or be able to have it as a reference if you need. Um, unfortunately, it will not have necessarily the screenshots because some of them have updated. I don't know how how well it will coordinate for you, but I will be able to show you online what we're doing today. Okay, our first um, ob our objective today is basically showing you how to access the fighter card system and the fighter cards, how to add an authorization on uh, to the online database, um, how to do an online event report. Because after you've done an event and you've got all your paperwork, if you're the MOLIC or the MOLIC requ requests that you put in the report for the tournaments that you did, for say, for example, you ran the rapier or the heavy field, they may ask you instead them doing that particular report that you do the report for the rapier and they will do the other one potentially. Either way, um, I will show you how this event report is entered. Um, Parents adding youth information online database. I'm going to just briefly discuss this because this is something that's currently, literally within the last week, has just been revamped and re um, redone. And how to create a new AEL. Printing your fighter cards. We're going to talk about the authorizations. Um, logging into the um, the Atlantean. You have to have an Atlantean enterprise or a login. And then you can click click on print your own off card. I'm going to go to the website to show you this. So please give me a moment as I share a new screen. This is the home page for the ministers of the list. The way that you get to this is through your kingdom web page. I'm going to go to the kingdom web page, I think, first and show you. From the Kingdom webpage, underneath the officers, Offices tab, you will see the Minister of the List tab located here. That is where you will find <laughs> the um, Minister of the List webpage. And then it will bring you to this page here, the home page, that looks like this. At the top, you will see that there... Yeah, we can't see your screen. All, all we see is the PowerPoint, PowerPoint at this point. PowerPoint, yeah. Thank you. That's why I was saying I need to see that you guys can see this. So, blah, 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 blah. Try it again. <laughs> can you see me sharing the screen now? Can you see the MOL page? Yes, ma'am. That's yes. perfect. Yes, perfect. Good, good, good. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's why I said, please let me know, because I can't tell from the way it's showing me. Okay. From here, underneath the MOL, you come to the home page. There is, up here at the top, I want to move this out of my way. Um, there is a warrant reporting site and a fighter card system tab for both of these. We're going to go to the fighter card system first because we're talking about authorizations. We go to the fighter card system. It tells you, welcome to the MOL table. For MOLs, you click on for MOLs, help a fighter. And it will bring in to log in, use MOL table. Now, if you are a newly warranted MOL and you get to this page and you log in, I'm going to log in. You're going to see the KMOL version of it. But you log in and you can't look up anybody. It only shows you your information to see your card or your fighter card. You need to email me because it means I need to update your permissions in this particular website. 
because there is different levels of permissions to be able to see fighter cards, add fighter card authorizations, and so forth. So for the example that we're using here, I'm going to show you guys mine. We have three ways of being able to look up a person's fighter card. As we've logged in, and this is what you should see when you see it logged in. You should see a list for their modern name, their AEL, and up here you will see buttons on this page that tell, describe what you can do. I'm going to put in mine. Too long. Oh, that's me. As you can see, I've looked at it before. And I'm going to pretend like I'm going to add something because I will back out. We'll say add. This will show me when I go into it, this is Kulan's fighter card. It shows you my AEL, it shows you my SEA name and my modern name and my email. And this is the email that the fighter card is going to get sent to when it's notified that's been updated. As you can see, I have EQ ground crew, I have rapier. If I say we were gonna add on rapier two-handed, for example, you would click on the box, use the drop down to choose the, mar the MOL, and for the fun of this, we'll we'll pick Laura. And for the first marshal, whoever is the two-handed rapier marshal or the marshal that the first that's in the list, you choose them here. Now, here's where this gets fun. Let's say, for example, you go to look for your marshal and they're not in the list. Well, that's an indication that the marshal's warrant may not be up to date. Because this, these drop-down menus are fed into by the warrant system. The problem is, is that with the warrant system, however, membership information does not update quickly. So you could have a person who is a warranted MOL or a warranted marshal, and the only reason their warrant was going to expire was because of their membership, and their membership information has not updated yet from the SCA. We have no control over when that information gets downloaded or when it gets updated. So your warrant will look expired even if you're not. You have a current membership, you will have paid your membership up, but that membership is not up to date in the warrant system. That is why if you look right next to these where it says not required, if you run into this problem and you can verify that that warrant, that that, that it, MOL or Marshall has a current membership, and you go over to the warrant site because you will check their warrant. And if it's the only reason why that they don't have a current membership or current warrant is because of the membership, then you can still put in this authorization. If, however, you go over and check that marshal's warrant and it says that they need a class or something of that sort, then that marshal cannot sign off on this authorization because essentially at that point in time, that, that particular warrant has been expired. And this is one of the problems that many people see when they're going to try and put in an authorization. And I try very hard to clarify this for people. So we're starting here. A simple way to put all this, you just do the drop down menus and hit submit. When you hit submit, it's going to send the email to this person's email that there's been an update to their fighter card. So they know to go in and reprint their fighter card. But as I said, this gets into the question of, okay, so what if my people are not there? What if the person does not have an AEL? I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen, and we're going to go back to the PowerPoint now. So, if you can't, again, this goes into the PowerPoint. If you cannot find the marshal, you check to see if they're currently warranted. If so, you can keep the first or second marshal blank. If you cannot find someone's name under the pick in Atlantean or contact, you have to contact the fighter to find out and confirm their information. Or in this case, they say contact the KMOL for assistance, which I've been doing a lot of helping of people right now lately. Um, but the other thing is, is if they are a new person, a new person to the um, SCA, they may not have created an AEL. So we're going to talk about, see about creating an AEL. Yeah, and I had, unfortunately, the PowerPoint is not the way I wanted it, but we'll do. Fighters and marshals, MOLs must have an AEL to have access to the online database system. Um, 
if in a polling order or pre-regging classes at university, you should already have one. And I tell people that due to the fighter card system having problems periodically with DreamHost, that if they need to tell someone to that they need to register an AEL, to use the university site to do so. It is the most consistent and reliable at being able to set up an AEL, as I've seen. So I will suggest to you guys to that as well, to send them to the University of Atlantia website and have them create an AEL if they don't have one. This is where I have the paperwork, I have the website posted in here for you. And it's uh, ideally you want them to do this before they authorize, but I've literally done this at the table while they were authorizing to help them. Um, going back, we're going to, so when we have this, if, if it is just an AEL problem, and let's say that they filled out everything for the information for you for that verification of authorization, and um, they didn't have an AEL, but they didn't tell you that they didn't put that in there and nobody caught it at the time. You can email them and say that you're going to set one up for them. I've had people say, if you set it up and it's gave them a generic password because they can change that password. The difference is, is that you create their AEL ID. And a lot of times I do this if I have to using their SCA name or something that they know that they will remember as going into the fighter card system because that AEL is going to be used across Atlantia. So it's going to be used for their polling system. It's going to be used for the fighter card system and it will be used for university. So it's really best if they create it. But I have in certain cases when we have some people who are not as tech savvy or possibly not as comfortable with being able to do so, assisted them by helping them create one. Online event reporting. So we're gonna, we talked about how you'd have to check the warrant database to see if a person had a warrant. Well, this is the same location where you do your warrant reports for doing the, um, for the event. So let's go and talk a little bit more in depth about the warrant database. And then we're gonna play a little bit with both of them. I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna go back over to the MOL table and I'm gonna go home and see if it will let me do that. So from here, I'm gonna, I, do you guys see the, do you guys see me navigating through the page? Yes, yes Good. we do. Okay, ministers of the list, warrant reporting site. Now this site recently had an update because of DreamHost again, discontinuing some of the plugins that we had available from Python or as part of the Python programming. So there are some hiccups here and again with this particular program. And there have been many people who have had difficulties with this particular program at times. Now you will see when you log in, if you are a MOL, you should see this first page this is underneath my name, all the reports that need to be reviewed. If you choose to help with being one of the um, report deputies or the uh, regional deputies, you can actually view these reports and, uh, and mark them as um, reviewed. When you review a report, you have to look at the attachments and such. And I'm gonna walk through that just for a moment to show everybody, because it is also part of that um, process, but this is what your report will look like once you've put it in. Um, one of the problems with this particular one is that I don't have any attachments and that's why it's still sitting out here. I've got to get with um, Heather and be able to see if we can update all that. But when you go through here, it shows you when it was, it shows you who's doing the reporting, it shows you the tournament style, and it tells you um, who the winners were. It also tells you who the marshal in charge was. Um, There's and the a reporter. question in the chat. Okay, what's your questions? Um, Marguerite asks if fighter authorizations expire and if so, how do you enter that in the, them into the system? Fighter authorizations, um, are they get renewed. 
and I will let me go back. So good question. We'll we'll step back for a moment then. I couldn't hear that. Did someone say something else or? That was my daughter walking in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back over to the fighter card system for just a second. Okay. So when you go to the fighter card system, right here, it says renew your authorization card. When a fighter logs in, they will see this. And that's how they renew their authorizations. It has to be done once every four years, I think. We used to be three, but it's now four. And if you'll also notice, there's a section here for parents of youths and minors. If you are a parent and you have children um, that have been authorized, you click here and you'll be able to see their information to print their fighter card. I am the one that has to enter the youth into this account. And so it will be linked to the parent's account in such a way that they will be able to pull it open with the, when they enter into their fighter card system. So both of these are ways to be able to see the fighter card. Um, you can view your auth history. You can print your authorization card from here. All of these are things that you can do as a fighter. Um, is there any other Got questions? It. Okay. And so the the date is being stored when they click that renew your auth card. It's not it's not something that you're controlling with the check boxes that you showed us. It's a separate record. Right. When you go Got in it. now, here's something else you need to know. Let's say a fighter goes and he's just got weapon and shield and he wants to add on great weapon. When he goes and authorizes that great weapon and you put in that new add-on, you go in, you pull them up, view them and add on that add-on, it updates their authorization again so that it will change their expiration date because essentially they've done a new authorization. And so the date will roll to the new date based off of when you updated that new add-on. So you can have a person who was just about to expire and they go through and add on a new form and the card will automatically update for them to that new authorization date when you put in that, that add-on that add-on authorization. Um, essentially what this renew authorization is doing is verifying that the fighter is still active. And by you going through and adding on a new form, it shows that that fighter has already been looked at by a marshal or two for their equipment, that they are still prepared for the field that they are on, and now have added on a new form to continue with their activities in that field. So that's why it will update for to the new one at that time rather than having to come in and just renew their off. But if you have someone who's just wanting to do weapon and shield, hasn't added any new forms on and they're getting ready to expire, you look at them and you say, you might want to log into the fighter card system and click on your renew authorization soon so that they know that they need to, off to renew their authorization. Okay. Now I'm going to, and you guys can still see me maneuvering in here. So I'm going to go back over to the database, the warrant database, if that's okay with everyone. <laughs> but excellent question. Okay. But this is what your report looks like when it comes to me. Let me see if I can show you more. Um, underneath here is where I will enter in recording a class that you took, or you can record a class that you taught. You can also record someone else's class. So say like one of your friends have a problem with their computer and you want to help them be able to enter the class information for them. You can do that as well. All of these are based off permissions that are provided in this um, if, in this database system um, for your warrant. And it depends on what, what level, if you're more than just an MOL, if you're one of the deputies or what have you, as to which one of these you have access to. Majority of you will definitely have the ability to put in a class you took or a class you taught, which will be how I enter all of your MOL 101, MOL technology, and 102 classes today. Underneath the warrant, MOL warrant, this is strictly for us MOLs. We can request a new warrant, assign a warrant. I can assign a warrant for someone. Um, 
the roster shows you everybody's name who's available. Um, I can go in there and, and if there's any roster issues, a lot of times roster issues are things like a class is missing. You have, you know, your membership missing. Um, sometimes their membership number is missing, things like that, from where they did not have uh, the proper information download from sca.org, those kind of things. You can also submit a new report. This is where you put in your event report is under this header here. And you can also view reports and if there's a report issue. So these this particular report has a report issue. Why? There is no attachment showing me that the sign-in sheets or any of the tournament paperwork that was performed at this event. So I cannot mark this as reviewed at this time. So I will have a report issue on this one. So back here in the beginning, I'm going to walk you through. So like if you need, if you're a new MOL and you want to request a new warrant, you request a new warrant, you choose the type, of course it will be minister of the list. You take like today's day as the class, and it is specific in how you put in these dates. I have had a horrible time trying to get these to do right. I think it's that way. And then the training. Here's where it determines whether it's going to be an MIT, a MOLIT or a regular MOL warrant. If you have complete, if you're working on the training requisites, you choose this one. And this will make this an MOLIT warrant. If you've completed the training prerequisites, this is the one you choose after you've taken the test and want to apply to get your full warrant. Again, there are notes here. You can document when you did your two sessions, if you've already completed your work, and you can upload a file of your signed paperwork from the events showing you've completed your apprenticeships. Once you fill these in, you hit request, and it will send the request to the front page over here, showing me here that there is a request for an MOL um, warrant. So all of these are underneath the warrants. This is showing me different classes and so forth of the, um, the different event reports. So you can see these are different report names. If it was a person requesting a warrant, it would tell me warrant request. Now, let's say that you want to see who in your area is a warranted MOL. You can click on the warrant roster, and I suggest usually to go by who is active or in training. You can see either one. Um, this goes through all of Atlantia, and then you have all the different baronies that you can choose in that area. But if you go under active, it'll give you the full list of who's available and when they expire as being one. As you can see, we have some membership expirations. They're pretty far out. Some of them are all the way in um, August. Others of them are in June and July. If you'll notice, this person has a MOL expiration as well that's gonna go on. So these people may have their membership already paid up, for example, this person here. It's just that the warrant system hasn't updated yet. So this is a situation where this person's warrant, will they will not be in the drop-down menu in the fighter card system. And I know I've already seen her membership card. I know she is up to date. But it will not update this date until after it has expired because of the way the SCA does its memberships. They consider it that you're purchasing a block of time rather than extending your membership date of, of, of expiry. So they wait until your membership is completely expired and then apply the new block of time to your SCA membership um, number. And that creates a problem for us because it has to wait till your membership expires. And then we have to wait another approximately two weeks to four weeks for it to download to the polling system. And sometimes it doesn't download correctly. So information doesn't get updated correctly. I'm going to be trying to work with Kirtwin to see if I can get hers updated, hopefully soon as well, for much the same reason. But this is also where you will see for your marshals. So if we go back and say, um, under the marshal warrant, you can look under their roster and see the same information for the person that is helping you at the field. 
if again they have just the membership is going to be expiring and they can show you a current membership card then they're fine to be able to do the work as a marshal it's the problem is simply the system has not updated their information yet um but again if it's in a situation such as this person where they need the mol 101 course or they needed a Marshall 201 course for whatever reason, or what have you, then you would not be able to let them continue because their class has not been updated. It's only in the case of the memberships that you can confirm. I'm not sure about the Marshall experiments. I think this was something they were looking at for throne weaponry and so forth. So I leave this tab alone. Um, I do say um, for submitting a new report, we're gonna, for our purposes, this is where you're going to be looking for most things. Again, the only time you really are going to look over here is going to be underneath the marshal is looking at their roster or unless you're actually applying for a marshal warrant. Hey, there you go. Um, that's a, in our friend. Um, but to submit a new report, you would click on submit a new report. And I'm going to describe to you, this is what the report looks like. If you will recall, we had that um, form that you were filling out that is a manual hard copy form that basically has all of this same information in it. Now, sadly, the administrator of this system has only provided you one spot to put in tournaments and one spot for tournament winners. And you can only list the total number of fighters and there's limited amount of space for your assisting MO, um, MOLs and marshal in charge information. Your number of authorizations here can be for the total, could be for that particular field. It just depends on how you put it in. So for my purposes of finding authorizations, um, it's become more apparent and much easier to basically break them out based off discipline. If you're doing the Marshall heavy report, it's easier to put all of them together under the heavy report and that were all the heavy ones. And then anything that was for a rapier, put under the rapier authorizations. And usually for most events, you're only gonna have the two reports, heavy and, and rapier. However, if you have a multi-day situation like we had for Ruby, Ruby Joust, you can use the other tab. And when you put in the other tab, you can literally type over here where it says the event or practice name, you can tell it what that report is. So in the case of a practice, you could say um, new demo and practice for um, Storval or Storvik practice or what have you. And then next to it say armored. Um, as you can see in some of these situations I've used, um, so if you're stone burn birthday, armored and the date. So I know that that was the armored report for that day because it was a two day event. You have to submit a separate report for each day. And that's one of the complications that happen, especially when you have a multi-day event. So separate report for separate disciplines on separate days. So in this case, the first report went in for Sacred Stone under Sacred Stone's event name. But all the subsequent ones I had to put in as the second day and what field it was. And... This way, since I knew the date, I could put in the date of the event or practice or what have you. I know it's supposed to be a range of dates for most of us for those kind of things. But since this report is specifically for each day, it's the day that you're reporting on. For us, we're always going to be reporting the minister of the list. And the hosting branch is whoever the event was hosted by. Um, if it's Atlantia, like for WOW, it's Atlantia. Um, if it was um, Ruby Joust, I think, I'm not, I can't remember now for Ruby, but I know it's one of the other, uh, I think it's Caramara maybe, um, but it's up in wherever the hosting branch is that hosted the event is what goes here. Your number of authorizations, like I said, is for that day. So if you had, say you had somebody who did an ad on the day before and you filled out the VOA for them, and then the next day, they decided to go ahead and add on another form, weapons form, the next day. They would have two separate VOAs, and they would be separate on each day. Um, again, if you have any behavioral incidences, situations with fighters, you do want to check that. Um, and here is where you attach a file. Now, this system will only allow you to attach one file initially. So 
if you've uh, taken pictures of everything out at the field and you just want to use the pictures off your phone and you download them or upload them to your email or such so that you can tag them onto here, you can upload the first one, which might be like your report form or something. But then you have to go ahead and submit it and go back into the form on the front page over here. Thank you back to the front page where we have the view. You go into the view section. OK. And see, again, there's no attachments here. But if there was, there was attachment. You can add attachments here by choosing the file and continue to add each one as you need but make a comment as to what the attachment is so that you'll know. So like say VOAs and you were able to scan in all the VOAs under one picture or possibly a um, set of, um, in, like in the situation of the equestrians where you have to have the state waiver and the VOA, you can do in the total together in that regard. But you must include attachments so that we can show that the paperwork and everything was documented for the day. Now, as you can see, this is my this is my um, my particular warrant page for myself. It says work. It shows me my information in the middle here. So if you have something that's coming up, say I can see where um, an event meeting is going is in 2025 going to expire. My 101 and 102 are going to expire in 2026, for example. It shows me what's gone. It also shows me the warrants that are either expired or have been removed. So my cavalry training is gone. I need to take that again if I'm going to. And I'm missing both of those particular classes. So I can't be a equestrian marshal at this point in time because I'm st I'm missing these parts for that particular um, discipline. However, you can see that the warrants here for the Kingdom MOL, Minister of the List and all that, they're going to expire in October. This is because my membership ends in October, but I have purchased my membership through 2027. So when I go through, it should update in October, or I should say in November because 30th or 31st, what have you. It should update after it expires when they send out the information. So there's going to be a period of time this year where my all, all three of my warrants are gonna look expired, even though technically they are not. Anytime you teach a class also, by the way, if you teach any one of these classes, it also counts as your class for the year um, for your warrants. And that's something that I'm trying to get this site to update for you. Um, usually at this point in time, for the purposes of reporting your warrant current, it's only accepting the MOL 101 course or the unevent course. But I'm trying to work with Brian, who um, is the administrator for this site, to see if we can update that information to include any of the classes that you take. Down here, it, it will also show you all of this information here. This shows um, on most all of your um, um, warrants, if you go into the warrant system, you will see all of these counts and all of these numbers as to how many we have, how many um, available um, in training people we have. So like here for the MOL warrant status, I can see if we go underneath the MOL warrant list that we have a list of all of these individuals in training and also in that are also in training down here and who have current warrants. And you can see there's quite a few that have like the membership thing that we can't do anything about. It's just there. The issues with memberships and such are also here. Anyone in red has an expired warrant. So if you're in the red down here and all of these are available for any of our MOLs to be able to look at and confirm. So if you're down there, you can see what it's saying that you're missing. And if it's the case of you've missed a class or something like that, we can coordinate to try and see about helping you get that class. Um, if it's a situation of your membership expiring or your membership number being incorrect, I can work with our web team, including Brian, to try and see if we can correct, if nothing else, correct the, the member number. We had a idea in place uh, to be able to start allowing people to update their membership um, expiration dates. 
this it would work just like a emit um, submitting a report it would be a new report as a membership report but i haven't been able to get that completed just yet but that is in the works so that we can try and start addressing this problem because this is the biggest problem we have between the two programs of allowing it to update from here in this warrant system over to the fighter card system. Let's go back to the PowerPoint right quick. And I wanna see where we are because I'm trying to give you guys more of the information that I know you're gonna need. The PowerPoint just generally lays an outline of the information that we have. So let's see, a new share. Back to the event report. All right. So I want to make sure you definitely know how to, to navigate to them. As you saw, you go to them from the Minister of the List homepage, and you should be able to access those sites from both of those locations. Um, youth authorization. So this is something that has um, changed. Um, the parent is not going to add the youth. I add the youth. This is the one thing that changed from this particular PowerPoint. I did not have a chance to update or change off of this one. Um, you have to have the original paperwork for all authorizations for youths and minors sent to me. I need the original paperwork because I have to have the original signatures to save on file. It's required by our, our insurance and liability. Now the website um, that we send our patient, our parents to is, is the same as the one we were just looking at, as I showed you underneath the fighter card system, um, where they log in into their own fighter card and they will see their child's information underneath their list. Um, they do not have the authorizations list. And this is the same website here. This authorization one here should key them to the same location. Now the handout for the parents has changed or we're going, will be changing if it hasn't already changed to let them know that once they've received their patient their their child's information and have had a chance to verify all the signatures and all the information has been filled out correctly on the forms that I will be entering the child information into the fighter card system for them to be able to access. There is a I'm going to change change this over for a moment. Sorry to bother you guys, trying to get back to the fighter card system for us for a moment. As we go back here to the fighter card system, one of the things that will help you guys, I, I don't know, and this is where I was talking about managing permissions. Um, if you cannot access the help of fighter, the um, purposes, and you can't print your own card for some reason, like I'm going to print my authorization card. I think it's going to show it here. Here we go. Um, you can see this is what my authorization card looks like. It shows that I have rapier and ground crew. I can do ground crew. I can't do um, any of the other um, marshalling for, for EQ. But it shows me uh, my other warrants just as they are listed in the warrant system. If you pull up your card and you do not have this information correctly displayed for whatever reason, if something's missing, like I had a individual whose warrant expiration was not the same on his card here in the fighter card system as it was in the warrant card system. So it took us a little bit of cor uh, correlation with our web team to get this information corrected. So if you pull up your card and you find that there is something that is off or missing or not properly displaying, please let me know. Please send me an email. Um, we have a huge um, process right now going on, we've had to completely rework the fighter card system because the database was constantly changing and was not meeting up or matching up to our people who had warrants or who had um, fighter cards. So they have fixed that problem now. And I'm very thankful for Eldrith and all of their hard work. They are a wonderful crew. Uh, we also did not, we had recently taken all of the youth out of the fighter card system and had to rebuild the database. Thankfully, there's only a small handful of youth right now, but we are taking on more uh, youth fighters. So become familiar with being able to authorize youth and minors because after COVID hit, um, we lost a whole bunch of fighters, and now that COVID has been lifted for most of our fighting situations, 
parents are bringing their children back out and wanting to authorize them. As I said in the um, MOL 101 class, for the warrant site, we do not submit any of the information on children to this site. Part of it's about um, safety and security. I don't know if you guys know this, but all of the youth warrants, warrant officers that are um, the marshals have to be have to have a background check to be able to be a youth uh, marshal. And I am also looking at instigating that for the KMOL, my KMOL deputies, and potentially for those who are going to work strictly as an MOL for the youth, because it will help be able to make it consistent throughout our policies about protecting youth information. This site at this point in time can be accessed by anybody who becomes a minister of the list or a marshal. And those, and they do not go through, not all of them go through a background check. And we can't verify or confirm um, if they've had any kind of um, potential cause to want to limit their information or ability to access youth information. So just as a measure of precaution and protecting our youth, we do not want to make that information readily available. And uh, I know that that's something that has changed in our recent dealings with this, but it, it really comes down to all of us trying to help keep it as safe and secure for all of our fighters and such. Now, as you saw, I just went in, I, you guys still see me um, maneuvering through the program, I hope, yes? We do? Yes. Yes. Good. As you saw, I just went underneath the um, view reports tab. This shows you all the current reports, those that have been approved in the past, the reviewer. If they've not been reviewed, there will not be a name here. So they're still awaiting review. Um, you can look at older reports. And this is one of the reasons why I'm taking this out. There's 17 pages of these reports that have been stored and saved for now. I can't do anything about previous reports having information in them, but I can do something moving forward is how I look at it. And the older reports do get purged out. So eventually we won't have any of that private personal information of kids on here at all, thankfully. But for now, um, moving forward, we want to try and do that. And as I said, say like you have a person or a fighter who comes up to you and says, well, hey, I got authorized at... Ruby Joust, for example, and um, they did a, a weapon add-on for Spear. You can come to one of the older reports if you, and this is where it comes to looking at tr troubleshooting and trying to help out fighters. You can look at that Ruby Joust report. Mind you, this is why I, you see how it says Sunday, Sunday and Saturday, so I know what days they were on. Doesn't tell me what discipline. But I at least know, or, or actually it does tell me what discipline says, armored or armored or rapier. There's youth for Saturday, that kind of thing. So I can see when or what disciplines and what days it was on. So if they can give me a rough estimate, I can potentially look through these, these different reports and see if their VOA is in that stack. Now, if it's a parent that comes up to you and says, hey, I, I know they authorized at this event, you'll have to tell them they'll have to contact the KMOL because I am the only one that's going to have the original paperwork for them and that it's not going to be stored or saved anywhere else. Other than that, uh, these, this is generally how to move about through all of these programs and how they work together. I want to open up the floor now while we have some time for questions because there may, I'm sure that there are some things that you guys may want to know about the systems and I might be able to answer for you. Anyone have any questions? I have a question um, <laughs> about obtaining your warrant and, and the training process. Um, I know that you have to train under a warranted marshal. Does it have to be in the kingdom? Or is it, essentially what I'm asking is if I'm at Penzik, and one of our actual warranted marshals are helping with a list, if I sit in and help them, does mm -hmm. that count mm -hmm. as one of my signatures 
towards getting my martial arts. I, when it comes to, because it's an Atlantean warrant that we're looking at, in any situation, whether it's the MOL or the martial, it, it would make sense to me that if it's a, one of our marshals that is doing the marshalling, and that marshal is willing to sign off on your paperwork, because remember, you got to bring your paperwork with you to be able to have it signed off for you, okay, um, as one of your in-training sessions. And they're willing to let you assist them as part of that field. I see no reason why it should not be able to be used. It's the same idea for the MOL. If you go up to Penzik and you have, say, Paganis is sitting at the table and you ask him if you may be able to sit with him as your one of your MOL IT um, training sessions at, for that day or that what have you, he can document the day, he can document the information on the warrant uh, on your paperwork. And as long as they're willing to sign that document and show that you helped with that session, absolutely. I see no reason. And there's there's so many opportunities for our ITs to be able to get um, sessions and trainings that I don't think limiting you just because you're going to be out of kingdom, as long as it's one of our warranted marshals or MOLs that are with you, there's no reason not. The reason why I say that it needs to be one of ours, one of Atlanteans, is because one, you're looking for an Atlantean warrant not one from over in Meridius or Trimeris or something. And the fighting formats are, are different. The, the, the cards are different from kingdom to kingdom. Some kingdoms break out the different fighter disciplines into all the ones like we do here in Atlantia. Other kingdoms just simply say armored combat. And that's all armored combat, no matter what the form of the fighting weapon they use. So, it's imperative that you basically get your paperwork coordinated and signed off with someone from Atlantia for your purposes there. 